Hey guys, I'm trying something a little bit different today. If you like it, let me know in the comments below. We're going to consider this like a pilot for a new series, and if you do like it, maybe it'll get picked up for a full season. I hope you enjoy. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube jury, you've been called to hear the closing arguments in the case of the People vs. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. As per usual order, I hereby request that you refrain from voicing your opinion in the comments section until you've heard both sides. Today, we will be beginning with the prosecution. Thank you, Your Honor. I won't waste your valuable time today because we all know that remakes are never as good as the original. Objection. Argumentative. It's a closing argument, Counselor. It's supposed to be argumentative. But what about Scarface, a uh, Little Shop of Horrors, The Man Who Knew Too Much? Sustained. Regardless, the 1974 Toby Hooper film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a certified classic of horror cinema. It puts viewers in a state of absolute shock at the horror and traumatic events on the screen. So much so that viewers often remember it being far bloodier and far gorier than it actually is. The 2003 remake, on the other hand, is a cheap cash grab full of fast editing, big boobs, and a pornographic level of violence and gore. I thought you were arguing against it. This soulless remake, like all entries in that plague of bad horror remakes from the early 2000s like Friday the 13th or A Nightmare on Elm Street, disregards everything that made the original great, from its cinema verite to its central themes. It reduces a film about the horrors of the meat industry into a stock slasher flick with no themes outside of its own shock value, sexual exploitation, and jump scares. Its characters are annoying, the cinematography is uninspired, and the climactic dinner scene, one of the greatest scenes in all of horror, is removed in its entirety. Characters are annoying, cinematography is uninspired, sexual exploitation... You know, we have a court reporter for that sort of thing, Counselor. Oh, I, I beg to differ, Your Honor. Uh, there was no budget for a fourth costume or a stenography machine. As I was saying, let me remind you that the remake inspired a horrible prequel that we all would rather not have seen. Objection. Relevance. Relevance? Yes, the existence of another film does not negate the quality of the original. Or does the prosecution wish to argue that the original film's sequels should all be entered into evidence? Granted, I would draw. <sighs> Besides, I rather like the prequel. Ultimately, the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a poor imitation of a great film, and it doesn't deserve to be remembered. I'm sure the jury can see that with their own eyes, and uh, will vote in favor of capital punishment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not sentencing. We're not going to have it taken out back and shot. We're only here to ascertain whether or not the film is guilty of the crime of being bad. <laughs> Apologies, Your Honor, I got ahead of myself there. If there's nothing else, then, defense? Thank you, Your Honor. Now, you've just heard a lot of arguing about how the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre isn't as good as the original classic. But uh, uh, while I do not deny that the original is indeed a classic, I put it to you to consider the possibility that the 2003 remake is not only a good film, but might actually be better than the original. Preposterous! Save the outbursts for Twitter. Let me break it down for you point by point, starting with the assertion that, and let me make sure I get this right, the cinematography is uninspired. I would like to direct you to Exhibit D, here right now, the IMDb cast and crew list for the original film. You see here that the cinematographer, also known as the Director of Photography, is listed as one Daniel Pearl. Remember that name, Daniel Pearl, who designed iconic shots like those shown here in the Exhibit E highlight reel. 
This last shot, by the way, should dispel the notion that only the remake is sexually exploitative. Objection! I never said that. It's a straw man argument. Overruled. You do realize this entire court is fake, right? What? Now, let us look at Exhibit Q, the cast and crew list for the remake. Here, listed as the cinematographer, is none other than Daniel Pearl. But how can this be, if the cinematography of the remake is so much worse than the original? Objection! Sustained. The jury will disregard all sarcasm. We can't show it here due to YouTube guidelines, but I encourage you to make note of several scenes in the remake that demonstrate masterful cinematography, like the shot through a gaping bullet wound near the start of the film, which, by the way, was done practically. Now, in direct response to the prosecution's assertion that the characters are annoying, I would like to present Exhibit A. It's just boom, it goes boom, and it's Franklin, boom. Franklin, I like me. Please change the subject. Boom, yeah, that's terrible. It's... Come on, Franklin. It's going to be a fun trip. <laughs> Sally, they took the keys. We don't have any keys. They took the keys. <laughs> It's a value judgment, to be sure, but I'd argue that none of the remake's characters are as annoying as that. I'd also like to discuss the lack of the dinner scene. As was correctly stated by my opponent, it is one of the greatest scenes in all of horror, and therefore, it would be foolish for any filmmaker to attempt to recreate it. As such, the remake wisely avoids such things and places the climax inside the meat factory, a location we don't get to see in the original film, but which is thematically relevant. And as for those themes, the remake does offer lip service to the original's PETA-esque theme about eating meat, but like with the dinner scene, it doesn't try to replicate it, instead focusing on themes of maturation, maternity, generational trauma, and yes, even exploitation itself. We don't need to rehash the various evidence to support the conclusion that our main character in the remake, Aaron, is pregnant throughout the whole movie, but let me remind you of the opening scene, Exhibit K, which makes it clear that Aaron won't drink alcohol or smoke pot, even though that seemingly goes against her character, and that she's deeply concerned about her boyfriend's sense of responsibility and commitment. In short, she is navigating her emergence into not only adulthood, but motherhood. And the fact that she ends the movie by saving the life of a baby is hardly a coincidence. Objection. Grounds? That's a real stretch, don't you think? I'm not here to think, I'm only here to judge. Overruled. In closing, the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the best horror remakes ever made. If it isn't better than the original, it is at least better than the vast majority of the franchise's sequels and of the other Platinum Dunes remakes of the early 2000s. Besides, I haven't yet mentioned the greatest thing the remake has going for it, R. Lee Ermey. That's just an educated guess, but my money says your dead body's right there in that band. And with that, the defense rests comfortably. Um, very well, thank you, counselors. Uh, the jury is now directed to begin deliberations in the comment section below. And remember, you are only charged with ascertaining whether or not the remake is guilty of being a bad movie. Before you are dismissed, the court would like to thank its many supporters and to remind you, the jury, to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, you are then free to go.